Welcome to another Todd's Two Minute Tech Tip Tuesday. Brought to you by the National RV Training Academy, the largest hands-on RV training academy in America. Hey, on this tech tip, I'm gonna go over choosing the right battery for you. Now, if you are new to looking at batteries or choosing batteries, let's say you have an RV or something like that and it's time to change the battery. There's a couple factors that we look at. Now, most of us, we look at one factor and that is choosing the right voltage. Got a 12 volt system, we need a 12 volt battery. There is another component that we look at when it comes to the size of the battery or how much potential energy we have. We also need to know the amp hours. So we get our voltage and then we get our amp hours. Now, when we do that, that those two combined, or when we purchase a battery, that gives us the amount of potential energy that we have. Why do we need to know that? Because sometimes we may wanna take our RV somewhere where we're not plugged into shore power. The weather is nice, kind of like it is right now, this time of season. You just don't need an air conditioner. Maybe I just want my, my lights and my fans on, open up the windows and, and have a great time. Well, you're thinking that the battery may get you through the whole weekend. Well, and this is what we need to figure out. Probably it will not. There's only so much potential energy in there and then every time you turn something on, it's gonna draw from that battery. So when we look at the size of our battery, the typical size that we get, especially when we purchase you know, our RV, it comes with a 100 amp hour battery at 12 volts. So if we take our two numbers, I know that this is 12 volts, a standard battery, and I know that there's 100 amp hours. Well, if we understand that wattage is volts times amps, okay, volts times amps. I got 12 times 100, then I know I have 1200 watts potential to pull out of that battery. I can use that same math when it comes to my demand, my lights, or my fans. Well, anything 12 volts that runs off the battery, well, we already know the voltage, which is 12. Now, the thing is, is we don't, we don't really know how much our lights are pulling, but we can assume one to two amps per hour, right? So when you turn on your lights, you can expect somewhere between 12 and 24 watts per hour being pulled from the battery. If I'm pulling, say, 24 watts per hour, and I've got roughly 1200 watts, then I can do the math to figure out how many hours I can run off that battery. If I add loads, well, I've got to add the watts that I'm pulling from the battery if I add a fan. Most fans, our fart fans, pull between two and three amps. So we're looking anywhere between 24 and 36 watts per hour. Okay, so that tells me how long I can pull from the battery. Here's where we're getting to this, guys. If you wanna stay out longer or whatnot, you wanna go with a bigger battery or a second battery, okay? This is now where we're starting to look at maybe even switching the type of battery we have. Now, there's a shift when it comes to batteries. Now, the only batteries that we had to choose from for the longest were basically um, one type, right? We had our flooded lead acid batteries, deep cycle. They started to come along with gel and AGM, but Quite honestly, it's the same chemistry. The problem that we have with these batteries is, is that as, the, as we begin to use them, the voltage drops. And so we don't even get the full 100 amp hours out of it. If you read your data plates, everything about, or I'm sorry, the data information, <laughs> the fine print on those batteries, it'll tell you you only can use 50%. Well, that causes a lot of confusion. With the advent of um, 12 volt TVs, 12 volt refrigerators, uh, and other 12 volt appliances, they're coming more and more prevalent. We're gonna demand more from those batteries. And the batteries that we have are kind of ancient technology. A lot of questions, I said ancient, it's 150 years old. Um, there's always questions that I get, Todd, when do I switch? I understand that there's lithium out there. I understand that they perform better. I understand that they can run more things. And I understand that they actually, um, we can drain them a lot further. All of those are true, but they're expensive relatively. You, you pay more upfront for them, okay? And we've talked before, I've told you that the lifespan of a typical lithium battery is 10, maybe 11 years. The lifespan of your lith, uh, lead acid gel or AGM is two to four years, right? So you get a lot more out of those batteries. But when do you make the switch? Okay, that is, again, if you want to stay off grid longer, right? Stay with more, uh, having your 12 volt products on. This is where maybe going with the lithium battery works uh, better for you or also with your appliances, okay? These are workhorses, okay? They are sprinters, they, they are designed to run more products off the same battery and they last a lot longer. 
instead of only draining them 50%, we could drain them 90%, okay? But now we look at what type of lithium batteries do we go with? There's a lot of good brands out there. And as technology gets better, we wanna put pack more in the batteries, okay? And I will say this, I do make my own simple because the technology moves so fast, a lot of the battery manufacturers aren't keeping up, okay? What's, what makes lithium so great other than the fact of their longevity, lasting 11 years, other than the fact that we can drain them a whole lot further, is that we do pack them with technology. We have sensors, a BMS inside, that's making sure that we're treating that battery right. So think of your EMS, right? Your, think of your uh, surge protector, and your surge protector is coded to make sure that I have a certain amount of voltage coming through, not too much, not too many amperage, right hertz, all of that. And if any of those are out, it says, nope, we're not letting it through. Take that same technology and put it inside the battery. I've got a protector inside. It's called a battery management system. It does the same thing. Okay, why am I talking about all this? Because we can pack more technology in there, okay? Lithium, different chemistry altogether, there's four different cells. I got four small batteries inside a 12 volt battery when it's lithium. That's the way I want you to see it, four small batteries, right? It's kind of like open up the flashlight and you got four D cell batteries, okay? I've got four small lithium batteries. Well, if I have four different physical uh, subject, uh, objects, they can get out of balance right? One can go bad or whatnot. The BMS is there to protect all those four. And here's the newest technology, and this is what I want to talk about, okay? We need to balance those cells. After we use them, they can get out of balance. Yeah, that's just the way anything is, right? Typically, the, the standard off-the-shelf lithium battery, they have what's called passive balancing. That means you have to charge it all the way up, and the charge has to stop. Then the BMS will very slowly very slowly charge or balance the cells. And usually guys, that's a millivolt. Newer technology, newer BMSs, right? Very few are doing this out there. High-end batteries, um, they have what's called active balancing. This is where we're putting in um, active balancers that balance the cells as it's being charged and we can balance it at a lower voltage. Well, what does that mean for us? Here's where we're getting guys. Instead of 10 years, why not go 11 years? Not only that, but if we are running air conditioners and everything else through an inverter, having balanced cells means that I've got more potential for my batteries to last longer because they're all in balance, okay? So choosing batteries, okay? If you're just new to RVing, you're not using heavy uh, 12 volt loads, lead acid gel and AGM batteries are great. If you wanna go a little bit longer, you may look at doubling them, but if you're looking at putting in appliances that are 12 volt, or let's say you do wanna be out there um, uh, with your 120 volt uh, air conditioner, but you don't have a place to plug into and you're putting in what we call a solar system or an inverter, you wanna make the switch over to lithium at that point because that's a high demand and you need a battery that can perform on a high demand. Okay, so lithium is where we're going. It's up to you when you make the switch. If you begin to demand more from the battery, that's when you want to start making the switch. All right? And there's your tech tip. All right, before you get to the bloopers, which is why you're here in the first place, the RV industry needs thousands of RV technicians and inspectors, and now is the perfect time to do that. If you want to make more money or have more control over your time, Go ahead and click the link below, or if you just want to learn how to fix your own RV, got something for you there. Head over to rvtechcourse.com and get started today. Now for the reason that you're out there in the video, roll the bloopers. Hey, 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 you'll never find tech tips like mine. Yeah, the ones that help you so much. By the way, my battery. If you want to learn more about my battery, click the link below. This is not a, a paid for ad, by the way. Big beard bat. Big beard batter is the way to go. That's a lot. Should I end it?